Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation, a nice one. f is differentiable everywhere, and this function is from r to r. And of course, there are some exceptions here, like you can't really use all the values for x and y. So you don't want to make x, y equal to 1, because that's going to be undefined. Anyways, so f is differentiable, so we're going to use differentiation to solve this functional equation. I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. All right, so I'm going to be taking the partial derivatives here since we have two variables, x and y. First of all, I'm going to differentiate this the, with the, you know, the del operator. Uh, this is del over del x anyways. Some people just say partial derivative. So I'm going to be taking the partial derivative with respect to uh, x first. Let's go ahead and do that. Partial derivative with respect to x. So that means y is going to be considered a constant. So if you differentiate f of x, that's going to be f prime of x. f of y is con constant, therefore it's just going to be 0. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have to use chain rules. So it's just going to be f prime of this multiply by the derivative of the inside. But the inside is a quotient, so I kind of have to uh, consider that. So if you differentiate x plus y, it is going to be um, the derivative of x as 1, multiply by 1 minus xy, right? And then uh, it's going to be minus the derivative of 1 minus xy. In this case, uh, y is kind of like a constant here. Therefore, the derivative of negative xy is just going to be negative y. So that's going to be plus y times the first thing. And all of that is divided by 1 minus xy quantity squared. So we use the quotient rule here. Let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side a little bit. Oops, I was supposed to write it a little differently. Okay, so that's like f prime of a quotient. Multiply by this. Okay, let's see what this looks like. 1 minus xy plus xy plus y squared. So the numerator is going to be y squared plus 1, or 1 plus y squared. I guess I could write it that way. It's a little better. 1 plus y squared, and that is going to be divided by 1 minus xy quantity squared. Now, similarly, you can definitely, you know, just, you don't have to go through the same thing. It's going to be the same here first. And then the, the only difference is going to be, you know, y is kind of being replaced with x. So it's going to be, instead of 1 plus y squared, it's going to be 1 plus x squared. And everything else will be the same. Awesome. So we have these two things now, and why not divide uh, these equations side by side? Uh, and the motivation behind that division is we have the same thing, like a lot of things look similar, so when we divide, lots of things will cancel out, and we're going to end up with a simple expression. Okay, after dividing these, we're going to get something like this. f prime of x divided by f prime of y equals. Now these two expressions are going to cancel out, so we don't have to worry about it. These two expressions are going to cancel out, we don't have to worry about it. So we're going to end up with 1 plus y squared divided by 1 plus x squared, which is awesome. Great. So, and we want to cross multiply here. So if you cross multiply, we get 1 plus x squared multiplied by f prime and 1 plus y squared multiply by f prime of y. And obviously we have some sort of symmetry here. And this is really cool. Now, what is this equation supposed to mean? We're trying to solve for f, and so f of x can be expressed as a function of x or in terms of x, and f of y can be expressed in terms of y, right? But uh, we have a function of x on one side and function of y on the other side. It's only possible if both of these are equal to a constant. Otherwise, you can't have a function of x only equal to a function of y only. Therefore, from here we get something real nice. 1 plus x squared multiplied by f prime equals a constant. So from here I can isolate f prime and write it as c over 1 plus x squared. I mean, you don't have to go through the dy over dx thing. If you want, you can. But if you differentiate both sides, consider the fact that the integral of f prime dx is f of x plus c, or some constant k, let's say, we can just go ahead and integrate both sides. And 
that's gonna give us f of x. So on the left hand side, we get f of x. Let's save the constant for the right hand side. What is the integral of this guy over here? And that is basically arctangent. Some people call it arctangent, or you can call it tan inverse. So that's the inverse function, inverse of tangent x. And so it's, we can write it as c times tan inverse of x. And plus, of course, I have to use a constant. How about k? OK, great. So this is f of x, but it's not done yet because I still want to find, if possible, c or k or both. And to find it, I'm going to use the value for f of 0. What is f of 0? In our original problem, in our original equation, if you replace y with 0 and x with 0 at the same time, but I want to replace y with 0 first because there's a reason behind that, uh, you're going to get f of x plus f of 0 equals f of x. So I replace y with 0. And from here, we're going to be getting, f of x is going to cancel out, we're going to get f of 0 equals 0. This is nice, right? Okay, cool. But then we're going to simply um, plug this in. Uh, if we Actually, we didn't re need to replace x with 0. Anyways, f of 0 is equal to 0. We can go ahead and plug it in here, f of 0. And then right-hand side is going to give me c times 10 inverse of 0 plus k. But 10 inverse of 0 is 0. Therefore, this is k, k equals 0. And that means f of x can be written as c times 10 inverse of x plus 0. So I don't have to write it. And this brings us to the end of the first method. Great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Second method also use, uses derivatives, but in an interesting way. So our second method, let me rewrite the original problem. Now, before I start differentiating, I'm going to do a little bit of functional equation stuff. So let's replace y with negative x. If we do, we get f of x plus f of negative x. Here, notice that we're going to get 0 and 0 divided by something, which is, uh, by the way, 1 plus x squared, which is uh, non-zero, is going to give us f of 0. Now, this is significant because uh, we know that f of 0 is 0, do we? Well, so pretend that you don't know it. So let's go ahead and replace x with 0 here. That gives us f of 0 plus f of 0 equals f of 0 which means 2f of 0 equals f of 0, which means f of 0 equals 0. Well, we found it with the first method, but this is the second method. Okay, great. Now, having said that, let's go ahead and plug that in here. So we now have f of x plus f of negative x equals f of 0, which is 0, and f of negative x becomes negative f of x, which means f is odd. Awesome f is an odd function, let's go ahead and use that fact in an interesting way. So uh, since f is differentiable everywhere, I can uh, write f prime by using the limit definition of derivative. This is equal to limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Great. Now let's save this for future. Now, we have the fact that f is odd. How am I going to use it, right? Well, I have a difference here, but my original problem is given as a sum. So why don't we just convert that to a difference, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the following. And we're going to go back to the definition of the derivative, okay? So let's consider f of x plus f of negative y, which, is, which can be written as f of x plus negative y, which is x minus y, divided by 1 minus x times negative y, which is 1 plus xy. Great. So this comes from the original equation. I didn't use the fact that f is odd yet, but I am going to. Since uh, f is odd, f of negative y can be written as negative f of y. And this is the critical part because now we have an equation for a difference. Awesome. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and use that definition or identity here. So f prime becomes limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x. So it's kind of like a difference of two, two f's. And if I use the identity that I have here, I'm going to get the following. This is going to give me limit as h approaches 0 of f of 
it was f of x plus h minus f of x. Therefore, it's going to be f of x plus h minus x divided by 1 plus x times x plus h. Hopefully, you get the idea. And that is divided by h. So I just use the limit definition and just use this identity for f of x plus h minus f of x. Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this. x cancels out. Unfortunately, it doesn't simplify a whole lot, but don't worry. We'll take care of that. And now we can basically write this as limit as h approaches 0 of f of h over x squared plus xh plus 1 and then divided by h. But here's what I would like to do. So this is what we would like to do. Uh, I want to get something, uh, you know, this, you see the stuff inside the parentheses. I want to get the same thing at the bottom. So let's go ahead and divide by this. But we're dividing the denominator, so it's kind of equivalent to multiplying. So we kind of have to divide again. I can do the following, right? Hopefully. Now, here's what I would like you to see. This limit here is kind of special and it's equivalent to something like this. So let's go ahead and, for example, if I call this h over x squared plus xh plus 1, let's go ahead and call that k. If h approaches 0, k also approaches 0, obviously, right? So we can write this as limit as k approaches 0 of f of k over k. And so that's what it is. This is what it is. And it's going to be multiplied by something, of course, but don't worry about that. We'll take care of that with the limit. And as h approaches uh, 0, it's going to be 1 over x squared plus 1, by the way. So we can kind of uh, write this whole thing, include that as well, right? And we can write it like that, okay? Since h, uh, x and h are different, uh, we're just replacing h with 0 here. Okay, cool. So this is uh, the uh, f prime can be basically written as follows. f prime of x can be written as limit as k approaches 0 of f of k over k times 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay, great. Now, how am I going to use this information, right? Well, here's the thing. If you consider f prime at 0 by using the definition again, and remember f of x plus h, it's just going to be f of, oops, I forgot to write the limit. Limit as h approaches 0 or k, doesn't really matter, same thing. Uh, you're going to write it as f of x plus h, which is f of h, minus f of x, which is f of 0, divided by h. But f of 0 is 0, remember, we found it. So this can be written as limit as h approaches 0 of f of h over h, which is the same as this limit, by the way. Therefore, that is equivalent to f prime at 0. So, in other words, we can write f prime of x as f prime of 0, which is this one here or this one here, multiplied by 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, this is the super duper critical part. What is f prime at 0? It is a constant. Yay. So we can set it equal to c. And now write f prime of x as c over x squared plus 1. And you know the rest of the story. From here, by way of integrating, you get c times 10 inverse of x. The cool thing about the second method is that we don't have to deal with the plus k. That comes from integration because we didn't use integration. We only used the definition of the derivative. And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.